Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about creating a time lapse from an IP camera using curl or wget and ffmpeg. And those are some command line tools. I'll put a link in the description to the notes um, from this video, and you can follow along on there. And I'll also put a link there to the notes on installing ffmpeg on your computer. So this will run on Mac, uh, Linux. It'll run on Windows Subsystem for Linux. And a good platform for this would be the Raspberry Pi because it runs Linux. And if you're running a time lapse over a long period of time, say you're doing a construction project and it's lasting weeks, you can leave that Raspberry Pi running for weeks and you don't have to worry about uh, using a lot of electricity or anything. So I'm connecting up to an Amcrest IP camera. And on a Mac, the Mac comes with curl. You can install wget on its own, but I'll be using curl for the first example. So I'll select the command on my website and I'll copy that. I'll go to my terminal, I'll go to the desktop, and I'll make a directory, I'll call it TL curl for time lapse curl. I'll go into that directory, clear my screen, I'll paste in this command. Now I'm going to change the username, password, and IP address to be those that are for my camera. Okay, so that's finished. So what we have here is a while loop, an infinite loop, so it'll run forever until you hit Control C to stop it. And then it's going to run the curl command, and curl will download uh, things from the a website. So you can download a whole website or just an image. Um, we're doing that, and then we have digest authentication. If you don't have that, you'll get an error on the Amcrest cameras. Then we have dash O says this is the output file name, and the output file name will be the year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds dot JPG. So it will be a sequential number. That's the date and time. And then next we have the URL that we're fetching the image from, and this is on the camera. So if we fetch from this using the username and password, it will download a JPEG file. And then we have sleep one. So this is taking an image every one second. So that's probably a little fast. You could probably do it every 30 seconds or every minute, depending on what you're doing. And then at the end we have done, that means our loop is done. So I'll run this. And this is downloading the JPEGs to this folder I created. So if we open that up, we'll see the JPEGs in there. Okay, so I'll hit Control C here. I'll click on this folder and I'll open one of these up real quick. There's not a lot going on in the sky here, but <laughs> it's good for an example. So if I scroll down for a bit, I have this recommended video settings, and that's on YouTube's website. And you can go through this and find out uh, what, like say, bitrate you would like to use. So if you click on bitrate, it says here for 1080p, you want between 8 megabits and 12 megabits per second. So if I was going to 720p, I'd want between 5 and 7.5. So I have this ffmpeg command here. I'll copy that into my terminal. And I'm saying the input frame rate is 30. So if you want this to run faster, you might set that to say 240 or some other number. The pattern type glob dash i star dot jpg that says choose all of the jpeg files in the folder and then we have crop in width by in width times 9 by 16 so what this is doing is it's cropping it at a 16 by 9 ratio and then we're scaling it to 1920 by 1080 so if you wanted to do 720p you would change that here and then we have the video codec so we have lib x264 this is h.264 so i put some notes on my website here if you're using a mac or windows you can run the hardware encoding, so that's quite a bit faster. And that's if you have an Intel processor. But I'll just use this for now, this is a short file. Then we have the bit rate, so I went with 10K, so this is 10 megabits per second. And then the output frame rate is 30 uh, frames per second. Pixel format is YUV420P, and the file name is out.mp4. So I'll run this. This will be super quick because I have almost no files here. But I have the video file now, so I can double click on that and I'll run it, and yeah, we don't see much, obviously, but I did make one the other day. I'll open it up, and the first example, I think I did this at 30 frames per second for my input uh, frame rate, and it's very slow. There's not much action going on here. There wasn't a lot going on in the sky, so you can see if I scroll, you see more. So I'll close that, and then I did one. At, this was 240 frames per second with the same group of pictures. There's like 6,000 pictures. So if I run this one, there's not a lot of action early on, but towards the end, you start to see the clouds come in. So this is a little bit better. I don't think this video is too bad. I probably would crop the front off, and you can kind of see the sun on the left um, setting. But yeah, I mean, that's what I had to work with. Hopefully, when some storms come in, I'll get some better uh, time-lapse footage. Let's finish that out. Okay. As you see down here, it has over 6,000 images in this folder. So I'll close that out. 
I'll back out of this directory. I'll say make dir tl wget. I'll hit enter. I'll go into that directory. Clear my screen. I'll go up here and we have the wget one. So this is pretty much the same thing. So I'll run this and now it's downloading into that folder, tlwget. So as a test, I actually have a Synology NAS and I uh, used the terminal to get into that and I was able to run that on the NAS device. So that was kind of neat. You do have to be careful about running it on say a PC or Mac because they'll eventually go to sleep most of the time. So you'd want to use some kind of utility or change your settings so they don't do that. And like I said, the Raspberry Pi is a great platform for this. I'll go back out of that directory and I could uh, turn those into a video just like I did with the last one. And then I'll go back into the TL curl directory. I'll clear my screen. So here I have a bunch of JPEGs and I've downloaded a program on my Mac using Mac ports called JPEG Optim. And this will losslessly shrink a JPEG. So it won't change the quality at all, but it will make it a little bit smaller. So I can say strip dash all. This will uh, strip out any metadata that I don't need. Well, at least in my case, I don't need it. I, I don't need like location data and stuff that you get on a lot of JPEGs like if you take with your phone because I know where the camera is. So if I run that on this first file here and I'll list it out again, you can see before it was uh, 347K and now it's 318K. So you can make your JPEGs a lot smaller using that. But what I've done is on my website, I also made a command. If you're on a computer, on a Mac using Mac ports, you can install a JPEG Optim. You want to type sudo space port space install space JPEG Optim. And then if you're on Windows subsystem for Linux, Ubuntu, or any other like Debian based system, you can type sudo space app space install space JPEG Optim. And that will install that utility. If you do that, you can run this curl command with JPEG Optim already baked into it. So I've got that updated with my information now. So we're downloading the file, but this time we're not saving it to a file right away. We're sending it to the standard output and then we're accepting standard input from JPEG Optum. So it's passing it right from curl to JPEG Optum. So it's going to shrink it down and then we're passing that to the file, which is in the date format we used before. Now, if you had an, a really big uh, JPEG file from your camera and you're using a weak computer and you're using a short time frame, you could run into trouble here. So running JPEG often will cause it to take a little bit longer to run than just uh, downloading it on its own. But if you have a small card or you want to run this for a really long time, it might be advantageous to have smaller files. So I'll just run this command and it will do the same thing. It will download into that file or folder. Okay, I'll hit control C here go down to TL curl, and you can see the first ones here were uh, 348, 348, 347, and then these newer ones were 307, 308, 308. So the way I'm doing this is you're sleeping for a second in between photos, so you don't get a picture every second exactly. You get a picture, wait a second, and do another picture. It doesn't process it during that sleep. That sleep lives on its own. But I think for most people that will work fine. Like if you're trying to document the build of a a garage you're making or something like that, um, you can still get a nice time lapse out of this. So that's all for this video. I know this might be confusing to people who aren't used to working with command line. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to help you out with this. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.